your new record is going to be out really soon. What can people expect? What do you want them to get from that album? So it's this round thing. Mm -hmm. You take it home. You put it into this little hole in this thing called CD player or cassette player or vinyl player. And then you press play. And there's five guys from Finland making noise. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be great, I suppose. It's super great. It's really good. But um, yeah, I mean, we really had like a four year break with the guys from releasing uh, new music. And uh, yeah, I'm really proud. We really took the time this time. And it's, I don't know, honestly, honestly, it feels like the best album we ever did. Oh, that's bold. That is bold, but I feel like that. It's, I mean, I really love Hollywood Hills. I really love all the old stories. Maybe it feels like the best album because it's the new one. It feels fresh and everything. But for the first time, we are not trying to be anything. It's really like own t-shirts, own jeans, Even in the photo shoots, videos, we are wearing our own clothes. We don't even like, you know, try to be the leather jacket, rock and roll, whatever. It's like easy going. We want to play the small clubs uh, everywhere. We don't like, I don't know. It feels easy. Some people say that after a few years of uh, uh, a great career, it's nice to come back to clubs, uh, to small clubs, to come back, sort of uh, make a comeback to the roots. To yeah. feel that power again, that raw power, and to like uh, set yourself uh, in the first days of your career and say, oh my God, that was fun as well. Yeah, I mean, even on the album, it's a lot more acoustic guitar again. It's not that rock in a rock way. Of course, there's the rock power, there's the power of the band and big drums, big guitars, but even the album feels a bit more like back to the very start. And then we had the feeling that we want to play the some of the clubs that we played on the very first tour. It's going to be so, so exciting. Um, even starting in Helsinki on the small rock club in the center of the city where you went, like when you were 15 years old, you saw like Foo Fighters and whatever, like really uh, in that club. And I don't know. I mean, when we started thinking about, okay, the album is getting ready and obviously there's gonna, it's going to go out in October. Do we book the arenas? Like, uh, like why? Let's go to the buses and let's go driving to the, you know, to the center of the city because the arenas are always outside the city somewhere. So we're in the city and like, I don't know, I want to smell the people, the sweat and hear the noise and, and it's going to be. And feel the power. Yeah, but it's going to be exciting because they're going to be standing like 60 centimeters away from us. Really, and they're going to see and hear everything and it's going to be, maybe it's going to feel like we are together again mm -hmm. after the arena Tours. That's what I uh, what I'm always curious about. Uh, if you're on stage, let's say it's a great festival. Uh, sometimes people wonder whether there's uh, the fourth, the fifth, the tenth row, and people wonder whether you can see them or not, or you, or even if you notice them or not during performing your songs because they uh, keep bringing signs, uh, all the t-shirts and so on and gifts for you. And do you see them or not? Oh, yes, you do. I mean, of course, there's a lot of people. You can't remember everybody, but um, but first of all, of course, the signs, you always see them at some part of the show. Um, I try not to focus on them because they can say something really funny and then you're trying to, I don't know, sing a love song or something. Um, and then these faces, I mean, if somebody comes to the third or fourth concert, do you like, do I know her from, do I know him from, do I, do I know her from somewhere? And then it's like, maybe she was in Krakow and then she comes to Hamburg and then she's in Helsinki. Like, is that like an old neighbor or what's that? It's, it's a bit weird. And we have fantastic fans who come to a lot of concerts. And then like, you can sometimes guess when you play a show somewhere, like, I think she's going to be, she's going to be there. She's going to be there. She's going to be there. Hey, yesterday you were in the other order. Why Why did you change places? Uh, sometimes people uh, <clears throat> say music business is a madness. Mm, like it is. you keep traveling, you wake up in a hotel, sometimes <clears throat> you don't know what city it is, but you keep uh, reminding yourself about all the places uh, you've already been to. You've got great memory or do you just focus on all the things and th think, okay, this is my life, And those are all the memorable things that are worth keeping. Well, I think now that I, like two days ago when I was packing uh, for Poland for a long weekend here, 
Of course, I mean, it's, we've been on a break for a long time. So then I started remembering. I remember like weird names that I don't even know what they mean. I remember big and small stages and like these weird like moments in a tour bus somewhere between Budgosch and Warsaw. Um, but maybe because we, we've been away so much, uh, haven't been on stage with the guys. But I really love to travel and I love to like on the off days, I sometimes do sports with the local people or I go take photographs somewhere and entertain myself. We all love to go like downtown, have good dinners and like get to know the places actually. So we don't just you know hide in the hotel room when we're on tour. But I don't know. But I think there's so many places in the world we would have never gone to without Sunrise Avenue. And I'm really, really happy that, you know, uh, Sunrise Avenue took us to Zielonagora. I would probably never go there otherwise. No offense. I mean, it's a lovely place. But it, and there's a billion other places also, especially in Europe, that we have seen only because of the band. Mm -hmm. Many people appreciate that you guys uh, really uh, try to see the places, to see the cities and so on. And yeah, but you go crazy if you don't. If you just sit in the hotel room. I mean, Netflix has a lot of stuff and uh, <laughs> HBO and iTunes, but I, I think you go crazy and it's good to just, I mean, wear sunglasses, put a hat on, baseball cap or something or your cameras and then, or I bring my rollerblades. I do that a lot as well. So just go out. Um it's also good to forget about the hotel and to forget about the tour and forget about the band and forget about everything for for a couple hours and be on your own or then go with the guys. We go bowling, we go go karting, we go partying, whatever. So when someone <clears throat> uh, one sweet day says, oh my God, I must be crazy. I think I saw someone rollerblades in a Polish city. Yeah. It's not craziness. No. It's true. Uh, it's craziness because I shouldn't do it. And now I just bought a helmet like after all these years because I nearly had a crash in Helsinki. But no, it's it's fun. I mean, sometimes you don't have the strength to do that, but sometimes you do. And yeah, it's uh, yeah. And I'm tall anyway, so you have to look up when I come with the blades that are 10 centimeters higher. Mm hmm. How much strength uh, do you need to, to, to go on tour, for example? Because it's not just, uh, um, well, hanging out in hotels and so on and uh, just coming on stage 10 minutes before the gig. It's much more tiring than people think, actually. It is. I mean, of course, you... Uh, and demanding, of course. Yeah, and you have to entertain. You have together, you have to, like, find the power from somewhere every night whenever you have the show and then of course the like airports and the buses and the backstages and waiting rooms and uh, especially for a singer like being a little worried of your throat all the time if you're like I don't know if we are like 40 people with the crew and everything if one gets the cold or the flu then we touch the same door handles and everybody gets the cold but um, I don't know but you live in this really strange like bubble you don't know about the outer, I mean, <clears throat> you can like wake up after a tour, you can wake up like, whoa, oh, Donald Trump is the president. And like, what the hell is going on? You don't know about the out outside world. After two weeks, you forget about everything. Like my mom's name was, it's so cool. Until she calls you. Until she calls me. And remind me. My name is, yeah. <laughs> my name is like an Eminem yeah. song. Exactly. Uh, remind yourself of yourself from, let's say, over 10 years ago. Over. Boldly over 10 years ago, when you were starting the band and thinking about becoming a musician and so on. Uh, <clears throat> were you able then to think about what you've got today? Yes. I, I'm sorry to say it, but I knew it. I, I knew it when I was 16. I felt it somehow that this is what I want to do. This is what I have to do. Of course, I didn't imagine like sitting on this sofa with you on this day or I don't know, but I knew that this kind of a thing could come true if I fought hard enough, if I give it everything I have. I'm really sorry to say that, but I mean, it was a, it was more than a dream. And I'm writing a book about my life and I'm going back to the early years. Uh, now and I, I really kind of knew it. I must have been a little crazy. I, I let's say I didn't know it, but I believed in it. I truly believed in it. Don't be sorry because I value honesty. Mm. To be honest, <coughs> uh, but uh, well, teenagers dream. But when you started the band, actually, and mm. uh, the name appeared, Sunrise Avenue, 
uh it was like for you let's say it was a road from one record company to another how many demo records uh, did you give away do you remember maybe like a thousand it was like only record companies when i really went in to knock on the door that was 102 times so i gave a thousand or two thousand demos and sent them all over the place but um but i mean that shows i'd never stopped and i was like just they were bullying me at the record ah you'll never be nothing and i mean with that, that voice with that looks you'll never be a star you never make it you can't sing and you know is this a song i was playing fairy tale go about like is this a chorus Nah. and I don't know but it gave me strength that's the whole thing did someone really say about fairy tale gone bad is this a chorus yes I guess that person doesn't work anymore he does actually we are good friends and we hugged five six years ago you have to be kidding me no 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 but I'm not gonna say his name in front of everybody but he was one of the bosses of the big major record companies in the north Oh, that's interesting. <clears throat> What was the the um, the most often heard rejection note for you? Mm. The the looks, the voice, the songs. What was music what was wrong? Right. Music was too happy. It can't be positive. Should be like <clears throat> you know the big trends back then were like Nightwish, him, the Rasmus, Lordi in Finland. Like you have to be darker. Actually, I'm wearing black clothes already now, but um, they said that it will never work. Like, out of my life, it's too happy. It will never work. That must have been a surprise for many people. Yeah. And who was who was the lucky person who decided to sign you? Uh, was he sitting in the room on the other side? He's my partner management dude these days. But um, yeah, I think we found people who were stupid enough to believe in us. <laughs> And then we made it happen together. So, yeah. I guess they thing. don't regret. No, I, I hope not. I mean, it's still not like uh, it doesn't mean that everything is easy and life is perfect, but uh, we are we are still together. So that means a lot, like 12 years. Mm -hmm. That's a long relationship. There are always ups and downs. Not everything goes uh, well. Uh, sometimes there are surprises when a song is uh, a bigger success than you expect, for example. How to overcome the moments when not everything is great oh i mean second album for example was a big flop it really didn't work i think we sold the first album we sold more than half a million copies like gold from greece switzerland i think poland germany austria sweden finland everywhere it sold half a million the second album sold thirty thousand. like <laughs> that was bad and then <clears throat> it was quite close that um EMI, I, I mean, these days, Universal Music, they told me that you have one more chance because it's a flop. I mean, they lost all the money and it was like a disaster. And uh, then I told them that I want one more chance and uh, I mean, that this one chance would be that they send me to Hollywood to work with, uh, with uh, you know, big guys and big studios and have the access there. And they sent me there for a month and I came back home with a song. So it was a... I mean, you know, how do you overcome your low points? You work hard, you, you know, stick your head into the game and then you see if it's meant to happen again. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's, it's happening right now again. It's, it's uh, the new album is coming out. We have sold zero albums. It has, we have played zero shows. Nothing has happened. So it can be that we are not successful with this one. Of course, I mean, we have to accept that too. And the only thing we can do in studio first First, I mean, write good songs, then in studio to record them, produce them well, do it with the heart and then trust the world. Maybe it carries, maybe it doesn't, but I would rather go, I mean, we would rather go out and see how it works than just to stay home at safe. Like, yeah, we don't have to risk anything anymore. We're risking it, everything, like big time, small clubs and shit, and we love it. <laughs> There's risk every time you release an yes. album. This risk every time you all walk out the door, but no, but I, I mean that you're never safe, and it's especially in the entertainment world, 2017, 18, new things coming and going so fast. So we don't know how people are gonna. It's four years ago since we had a new album, so maybe there's a couple people who like it, and it never becomes anything big. But we are happy the music is out. I love the songs, so I just want to share them out. Let's I see. can I can see people commenting and they are waiting for the album. Let's hope so. It would be great, but I mean, honestly, honestly, we don't take anything for granted. Let's see how it works.
everybody who comes makes us really, really happy. If it's two people in the show, great. If it's 200, it's super great. If it's more, it's like, yee-hoo.